Yeah, so um, I read your piece where you talk about Buddha nature in the Nyingma tradition. And I think this will be the focus of our conversation today. Uh, um, you mentioned how these traditions don't as, as such have a sort of a, a, a monolithic position, but often we talk about the Nyingma position or the Kaju position when the main patriarchs or the main uh, scholars of this tradition uh, have a position. So um, we live, I think it may be best for us to go through the history of Tibetan Buddhism and see who are the major Nyingma sort of scholars of Buddha nature and what their positions are like. Um, and the source of Nyingma being the, the early transmission in the uh, eighth and the ninth centuries. Um, at that time, who would you consider as the main Buddha nature advocates? Um, first of all, me, perhaps as you, uh, as we all know, the major scriptural sources for the Buddha nature have already been translated during the earlier period. Mm -hmm. We can just name one significant scripture, that is the Tathagata Gava Sutra itself, which is an mm -hmm. earlier translation. Uh, so that is, I mean, from the, from the Sutric scripture side, but then on from the Tantric scripture side, as you know, uh, uh, the so-called Namji Desum, uh, starting from Guhyagava Tantra, we do have the idea of Buddha nature. There it's called Sugata Garbha, by the way, and Dehorshe Pinyingu and not the Tathagata Garbha, which is to be, I call it a kind of a metrical variant of the Tathagata Garbha, although in Tibetan, it would not make much sense, difference. And then from a, uh, from a, from a more Shastric uh, source, I think we should take sources such as Kamala Shila's uh, Umanawa, Mamadiyamak Aloka, and even Kawa Pelse, Chorului Yetsen, et cetera, who start mentioning uh, Buddha nature or related ideas like the Tekpa Chik, the one vehicle theory about the Gotra, the, the Rik, et cetera, and so on. So we should, I think, start from the, even from a Shastric level, we can start but as I would, I think I hope it will become clear in course of our conversation is that uh, the the Buddha nature theory, in a very narrow sense, uh, seems to be I would like to say a little bit subordinated to the larger, uh, let us say, the philosophical project of the Nyingma, which I would like to say almost a little bit like the uh, Hongaku of the Tibetan school would be the primordial uh, up initio awakening, the idea the Sangye bin Namsha. I think uh, the Buddha nature is kind of somewhat subordinated within this larger theory of the uh, of what I call yes Sangye Bin Namsha. So, mm. uh, so if you look at the Memata Cheng uh, by Padmasambhava, um, you see the propositions, the major proposition for Nyingma philosophy has been spelled out, uh, like Sangye Pao, etc. But you don't have the explicit reference to the concept or the term. Uh, either Dejin Shik Pinyingbo or, or the Dewar Shik Pinyingbo is not mentioned. So, so I think when we try to understand the theory, uh, the reception and the, the transmission of the Buddha nature, we should see within the larger context mm. of the Nyingma philosophy and not just an isolated case of the Buddha nature, I think. But mm. I think it will become more clear when you go on uh, discussing. 